A wise man once said, The Force is strong with this one. But not with this one. That's right, today we're talking about intermolecular attractions. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kaminasha. I'm your host Fu and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So in the last episode we talked about how molecules can be both polar and non-polar. And in today's episode we're going to talk about how molecular polarity determines how molecules interact with one another. So let's get started. Intermolecular attractions, a lesson from the bonding unit. What are intermolecular attractions? Intermolecular attractions, or intermolecular forces, are attractions between separate and distinct molecules. Molecular polarity determines the type. Applies to molecular compounds, not ionic, covalent network, or metallic solids. They are not bonds! The breaking of these attractions is much easier than breaking bonds, which is why molecular compounds have low melting and boiling points. So you have to have an important aside here because this is an important topic in chemistry and it's a little different than what we've been covering this unit. So, so far we've been really focusing in on the bonds between the atoms um, in our molecule. And uh, we kind of changed gears here to intermolecular attraction. Right, so instead of just looking at the bonds, now we're looking at forces of attraction that occur between these separate and distinct molecules. Yeah, so this, for instance, a water molecule has very distinct properties, right? So What's holding the atoms together, we've discussed that. Those are the covalent bonds between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Now, in a raindrop that falls from miles up in the sky, that's made of billions of water molecules. So it's not bonds that are holding all those water molecules together. It's actually intermolecular forces of attraction that are holding all of those water molecules together. And it's really important that we look at the name, intermolecular attractions. We're talking about attractions between the molecules, so we have to be talking about molecular compounds, which have covalent bonds. If you look at ionic, covalent network, or even metallic structures, they're not going to have intermolecular attractions. Their properties actually are determined by bonds. So only covalent. We're going to take a look at some intermolecular forces for polar molecules, first of which is dipole-dipole attraction. Polar molecules have dipole-dipole attractions between them. A dipole has two poles, like a magnet, and is the same thing as a polar molecule. Think tiny magnets attracting each other. These are strong attractions that lead to higher melting and boiling points. If we take a look at our picture below, we have two molecules of HCl represented. HCl has a polar bond and is also a polar molecule. Now because it's a polar bond and polar molecule, it has a delta positive and a delta negative end. It's kind of like a little magnet with a north pole and a south pole. Now because of these two poles, we call it a dipole. Now take two of these dipoles, that's where the name comes from, dipole-dipole attractions, and positive will attract to negative, and there we have our dipole-dipole attraction. Continuing on with polar molecules, we have hydrogen bonds. They're not actually bonds. Not a bond! So a strange name, but here's why they're called that. There are three molecules so polar that their intermolecular attractions are very strong and they get a special name. The three most electronegative nonmetals bonded to hydrogen create super dipoles. And they include water, H2O, ammonia, NH3, and hydrogen fluoride, HF. Not a bond! So since these are the only three molecules that exhibit hydrogen bonding, we want you to memorize them. Now a nice easy way to remember them is that hydrogen bonding is THON, F-O-N for fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. These are extremely strong attractions and lead to extremely high melting points and boiling points. Still not bonds though. Not bonds! Breaking a covalent bond would require more energy than breaking a hydrogen bond. Moving on to nonpolar molecules, we have weak forces of attraction. Nonpolar molecules have an even distribution of charge and they don't form tiny magnets. However, temporary dipoles can be created as nonpolar molecules get near one another. These are weak attractions and lead to lower melting and boiling points. Sometimes these are called London dispersion forces. They increase with increasing molecule mass. 
So again, thinking back to a sample of matter as being billions of molecules together, these molecules that exhibit a weak force, when they interact with each other, they distort the electron cloud. That causes these momentary dipoles, which forces them to have a very weak attraction. So here we have two helium atoms. They are monatomic and as such, very symmetrical. Bear in mind, we have taken a freeze frame of the motion of the atoms as the electrons would normally be moving around the nucleus. As we bring these atoms closer, pay attention to what happens to the electrons of each atom. The electrons in the atom on the right are attracted to the nucleus of the atom on the left. Also, the electrons in the atom on the right also repel the electrons of the atom on the left. Note, it is important to remember that again, this is an instant in time. Electrons don't stay like this. This instant in time is called a temporary dipole. And for this instant, the molecules, or in this case atoms, are able to attract. In order for these atoms or molecules to hold together long enough to form liquids is if the atoms or molecules are slowed down enough. Think low temperatures. Molecule ion attraction. When an ionic compound dissolves in water, the free ions attract to the polar water molecule. The cations attract to the negative part of the water, the oxygen side. The anions attract to the positive side of the water, the hydrogen side. These are strong attractions. If we take a look at our picture, we've got Na+, that's the ion that's being shown. And so remembering that opposites attract, we're gonna have the negative end of water, the oxygen, surrounding that positive ion and creating this molecule ion attraction. Well, that's gonna do it for this unit on bonding. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Come work for Inatech. No more TPS reports or fax machines that don't work. Every new employee gets a red swing line stapler. And yeah, we're not gonna need you to come in on Saturday or Sunday. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.